know you will want to watch this webinar again. It will be recorded, recorded and posted on Belimo's YouTube site. And we will have a question and answer session at the end of this presentation. We'd like to hear back from you. So at any time, I invite you to type your question into the question box and I will read them aloud during the question and answer session. Steve will then answer as many questions as we have time for. And if he does not get to your question, please rest assured he will answer you via email afterwards. Thank you again. And I would now like to turn this presentation over to Steve. Thank you, Ron. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Welcome. Um, as Ron mentioned, my name is Stephen Lopes, and I am a product specialist here at Belimo. Uh, I am responsible for our globe valve and for the water side of our retrofit solution business. Um, and today's webinar is going to be uh, entitled Belimo's Retrofit Opportunities, Benefits, and Applications. So let's jump right in. Okay, a little bit on our agenda for the day. Uh, first, I always like to start my retrofit presentations uh, with a slide just called what is retrofit just to kind of talk about uh you know so that we're on the same page as to what we mean by retrofit and how that applies to our business here at belimo uh, next i'm going to go over our standard retrofit solutions uh, these are all of our standard kits that are available for you so that you have a general idea of some of the standard solutions that are available to you uh, next I'll, I'll briefly touch upon uh, our custom solutions uh, in some previous webinars, I've gone into a lot more detail um, about our machine shop and a lot of the capabilities and the forms and some of the resources and things that you'll need uh, to get these custom retrofit jobs done. For today, I'm just gonna briefly mention it uh, again so that everybody is uh, aware that we have these custom capabilities as well. Uh, then for the second half of the webinar, uh, I'm going to be talking about the the more common retrofit applications, uh, and you see that we have different categories here. Uh, again, these are just some of the common applications. Um, these are some of the more, uh, yeah, more commonly seen things that we find uh, out in the field. And so, I'd like to bring them to light to you here today, so that um, you can have an idea of what to look for when you're walking through a customer site. Okay, some of the learning objectives for this webinar. Um, I think after the presentation is done, um, I think we should all have a good understanding of our retrofit solutions that are available to you. Again, that's standard and some of our custom. Um, but really, uh, this, this uh, presentation is so that we can recognize common retrofit applications. Uh, again, after this presentation, it'll be nice if you can have a general idea of what to look for when you go to a customer site so that you can see how our solutions uh, will fit for the customer's needs. And all of this is really in the hopes that we can be a champion for the customer, uh, especially as far as the retrofit business is concerned. Um, I like to always say that, you know, there's really no, no job uh, that we won't be able to find a solution for. And so all of these things together really enables us to be a champion for our customers. Okay, so let's start with what is what is retrofit? Um, <clears throat> retrofit, the dictionary definition is to add to something that did not have it when originally manufactured. Um, and that's basically, you know, kind of at the heart of what we mean by this retrofit business here. The Belimo translation would be to remove a previously installed actuator and replace it with the Belimo actuator. Uh, we found years ago uh, that there was a whole side um, of the market that was being neglected by old uh, actuators that were broken or that weren't uh, working correctly. And so we decided to start our retrofit business um, in terms of, you know, so that we could just sell more actuators, but also so that uh, customers could have the added fun uh, functionality uh, and benefits of having Belimo solutions. Okay, so let's start with some of our uh, standard retrofit offerings. Um, these are the uh, glow valve retrofit kits. So on the left there, you see those kits are part of our UGLK series. Uh, this is our rack and pinion style linkage. It basically enables us to use our standard air side actuators. And through the use of a rack and pinion, we can uh, translate the rotational uh, motion of the actuator into a linear up and down so that we can uh, install them on a, on a glow valve. On the right there, you see this is part of our GVL series. And these are our universal kits. These are designed uh, to fit uh, a wide range of valves, whereas the UGLK uh, series on the left there, those are much more specific to a particular valve uh, manufacturer, model number, size, things like this. 
and I'll go into a little bit more detail on our GVL series here. Uh, here you see, these are our four uh, GVL style linkage kits. On the far left, we have the SGVL, the S stands for Schneider. Um, this kit was made specifically to fit uh, on the old Schneider glow valve that uh, Belimo used to carry. Um, <clears throat> to the right of that, you see the UGVL, and that's our universal uh, version of the SGVL. So basically the UGVL was designed to fit on any glow valve that is between half inch up to two inch, um, and it'll really fit pretty much, I'd say, about 90% of all the different glow valves that are out there. So you don't need to know the exact manufacturer. You don't need to know the particular size. Um, all you, you need to know is if it's between half inch and two inch glow valve style uh, valve, this will most likely fit. Next you see our WGVL. Uh, the W stands for Warren, and this linkage kit is specific to our uh, Warren flange glow valves that we sell. So this kit will be specific to valves that are between uh, two and a half up to six inch. And again, those are just for our Warren uh, flange valves. To the right of that, you see um, the universal style FGVL. So that is the universal style linear linkage kit for flange glow valves. Again, similar to the U UGVL, uh, this will fit a wide variety of valves, but uh, this one is for valves flanged that are between two and a half and six inches. Okay, next we go to our short stroke valves. Uh, this linkage kit is called the UGSL 1200. And when it was originally designed, uh, it was designed to specifically fit the Siemens 599 short stroke valve. When we say short stroke valve, we mean it's a type of, uh, it's, a, it's a type of globe valve with a linear stroke. Um, but the reason why it's called short stroke is because they'll typically have a stroke of six millimeters or less. Um, so this linkage kit, again, as I said, was designed specifically to fit for the Siemens 599. Um, and it was designed with two actuators in mind. You see there you have uh, either the TF, that's our spring return option, or the CM actuator, that's our non failsafe option. Um, after it was released, we also realized that there are many other short strokes, short stroke valves out there. And so with the use of our UGSL-ADPT, we can make these custom adapters um, in our machine shop so that we can accommodate other manufacturers of short stroke valves. So uh, if you have some other valve that's not the Siemens 599, uh, just let us know and we can come up with a custom adapter for you. Okay, next we have our butterfly valve linkage kits. Um, this would be any kit that falls in our UFLK series. And uh, here on this slide, this is just a very small sampling uh, of all the retrofit kits that are available to you. Uh, we have some for two-way butterfly valves. We have some for three-way butterfly valves. Um, we have fail-safe, we have non-fail-safe. We have dual actuator setups, single actuator setups. Um, so we have a very wide variety of standard retrofit kits. Uh, butterfly valves are excellent candidates for retrofit opportunities because the valves are typically very large, very cumbersome, uh, and very expensive to replace the valve itself. So if you can just get it back up and running with a functioning actuator and linkage kit, uh, you're in, in good shape there. Okay, next we come to our zone valve retrofit kits. Uh, this is a relatively new area of business for us. Uh, in the in the retrofit department here. And you see we have these three standard kits that we opened simultaneously. Uh, on the far left there, that's the UBLK 1000. And that one is specific to the Taco Zone Sentry valve. In the middle there, you see that's the UBLK 1100, specific to the Erie VM zone. And on the far right is the UBLK 1200. And that one is specific to the Schneider VBB ball valve. Um, I have a slide further on that uh, shows an example of a UBLK 1200 that was installed. Um, and again, these are our standard retrofit kits for zone valves. So if you look through all of our resources and if you're trying to find a retrofit kit that'll fit your application, you go through all of it and you realize that your valve doesn't fit any of those standard kits, then we have a custom solution for you. Um, here you see this is an image of our machine shop. Um, it's state of the art. We have, it's filled with CNC machines. Uh, we have a machinist running it. 
who has around 40 years of experience. So I always like, like to say that if you have some information on, on your valve, chances are there's something that we can that we can machine for you to get it up and running. Um, so like I said previously, I'm not gonna go into too much detail here with the custom capabilities, um, but if you have any further questions on that, please let me know. Okay, now let's start talking about some of the common retrofit applications. These are things that you'll come across uh, in the field that uh, you know should kind of signal a red flag to you saying, oh, this might be a good opportunity for retrofit. Uh, probably the most common one would be a change from a pneumatic actuator uh, to one of our uh, electronic actuators. Pneumatic actuators used to be the industry standard for years and years, um, and a lot of them are still in service today. And basically what it is, is um, it's, a, it's an actuator that gets installed where you use compressed air uh, to move the stem uh, up and down. Um, there are some drawbacks to uh, pneumatic actuators. For one, they're usually very cumbersome. They're very large in size. Um, and two, they require a lot of uh, equipment. If you see here, uh, this is a schematic of a typical pneumatic control system. Uh, for one thing, you'll need uh, a lot of auxiliary equipment in order to run your pneumatic actuators. You'll need an air compressor that will require uh, regular maintenance and energy costs to run. You need a refrigerated air dryer. This means that inside of your pneumatic lines, you need to keep it free of any kind of moisture um, or else that'll affect the uh, control that you get out of it. You'll also need a filter station. Filters require maintenance as well. Uh, then you have your controller and your actual damper actuator. So by going from pneumatic to DDC, you can take all that equipment there that you see in the image and you can replace it with our uh, actuator. So it's helping maintenance costs, it's helping energy costs, plus it gives you better control at the end of the day. So this is a very common uh, cause for a retrofit. Uh, this is something that happens every day, very, very popular. Okay, next let's talk about uh, cooling towers. Um, this is an image that I pulled off of the website, just uh, or off of uh, Google, I, I just Googled cooling tower. Um, and if you're not familiar with what a cooling tower is, uh, a cooling tower is a piece of equipment that's usually installed uh, either up on the roof um, or it can be installed on the ground level as well. Uh, what the cooling tower does is it basically uses uh, fresh outside air to cool hot water that runs through the equipment there. Uh, it's basically a way of getting quote unquote free energy into your system uh, when the weather outside uh, is cold enough in order to do that. Um, and why cooling towers are really important for retrofit opportunities is because almost always cooling towers will have a large number of butterfly valves installed on them. In this image, it's funny, just so happened to be, um, I found three SY actuators installed on butterfly valves here. Um, these are, uh, you know, some of our Belimo actuators uh, and they were installed on these valves. But what I also thought was interesting about this picture is that you can see lots of other retrofit opportunities here with this manually controlled butterfly valve here, another one there. And if you keep looking across the entire image here, there are a number of, of uh, manually operated butterfly valves here. So every single time the, those valves need to be opened or closed, you have to send a technician out to them to manually open and close them. If in the future or for whatever reason, if they ever wanted to be controlled by one person from one location in the control room, then we can retrofit those with actuators and then they can all be controlled uh, from one place. So cooling towers, almost every single large commercial building will have one and they almost always have a large number of butterfly valves uh, installed on them. Very important for retrofit business. Another butterfly valve application would be in a bypass situation. So let's say that you have uh, a butterfly valve where it's controlling the flow of water and you want it to bypass either a piece of equipment or uh, from one room into the next. Butterfly valves are very commonly used for these. Um, you, you, you see them in two-way configurations, you see them in three-way configurations. Um, and in the center of the, of the screen there, you see this is a very common looking three-way butterfly valve with a very large uh, pneumatic actuator installed on top. Uh, we can simply replace that with one of our retrofit kits and on the left and on the right hand side of the screen you can see what that would look like after the installation. So 
Um, again, just simplifying things, uh, giving you better control and eliminating all that maintenance that's required for the pneumatic actuators. Okay, uh, next we come to glow valves. Glow valves are an excellent candidate uh, for retrofit opportunities for many, many reasons. Probably the, the, the largest reason is because a lot of glow valves can be very, very large, very, very cumbersome. Uh, the installation costs can be very high. You typically need more than one person to help you do these because, you know, one large six-way, uh, six-inch glow valve can weigh up to, you know, a couple hundred pounds, and so requires special uh, equipment. So uh, rather than replacing the entire valve, we can just replace the actuator with one of our linkages, uh, and we can get the whole system up and running. So. Uh, saves you money there, it saves you time, and it's uh, ease of installation. Okay, next let's talk about our zone valves. Um, what you see here is this is one of our this is this is one of the uh, one of the Schneider VBB ball valves. And uh, typically, you know, zone valves, uh, you wouldn't normally think of them as a good candidate for retrofit uh, because the valves are so small and they're typically so inexpensive that it just makes sense to replace the entire assembly. Um, the difficulty with that comes with if you, uh, if you have a building or a, or a collection of buildings that has these valves in them, some of these buildings might have them, uh, might have a couple hundred of them or a couple thousand of them. If it's a school, if it's a hospital, if it's an airport, these buildings can be very large. These valves are typically found in uh, cabinet unit heaters or small radiators. And usually there's many of them in the building. So uh, rather than going around and replacing all of those valves, like I said, hundreds, if not thousands, um, it can be a lot easier to just remove the actuator and replace it with one of our linkages. The, uh, the uh, standard kits that we made for these just requires an Allen key and the actuator snaps in place without, without any other additional tools. Uh, so again, ease of installation, saving you time there. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, I'm mainly responsible for the water side retrofit applications. Uh, but today, I also wanted to I wanted to finish by mentioning this uh, this uh, damper actuator application here. And uh, what you see here is this is a uh, this is an uh, uh, economizer unit. And what the economizer does is it's responsible for bringing uh, fresh outside air into your building. As we know. Uh, COVID has been a, a very serious problem for us for well over a year now, and uh, a lot of the ASHRAE standards are changing, um, you know, that are saying how careful you have to be now with the amount of uh, fresh air that, that you take in. Uh, indoor air quality is becoming a very important topic of uh, discussion, and so these economizer units are becoming more and more important. Uh, on the top right there, I just happened to find this uh, cutaway image, again, of an economizer unit. Uh, that already has one of our Belimo TF uh, damper actuators installed on it. But the point that I wanted to make here was that all of these units have uh, dampers inside of them. And um, some of them will have some, some faulty actuators. We can also um, retrofit it with one of our economizer units. Uh, it basically uses your geographical lo location to be able to control the outside air intake even further. So. Uh, as we move forward into 2021, as uh, COVID still remains uh, an important part of our everyday life, this type of a retrofit uh, solution is very important. So that takes me to the end of the presentation today. Um, I hope that after watching this, uh, it gives you a good sense of where the retrofit opportunities can be found uh, in a building so that moving forward, we can be a champion for our customer. Uh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Steve. Before we move on to questions, please remember to follow Bulimo on social media to keep informed about what's happening. At this time, please type any questions that you have into the question box and Steve will answer as many as possible. Should you think of any after the webinar today, you can certainly email myself at training at us.bulimo.com. I will now open it up for a few questions that have come in, Steve. First question, can we retrofit valves and other applications not shown here? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's important to keep in mind that, uh, you know, any type of a valve, whether it be ball valve, globe valve, butterfly valve, um, really, no matter what the application is, 
um, if the actuator is faulty, but if the valve still works, uh, then there's no reason why we can't retrofit it with one of our actuators. Okay, thank you. And the next question is, how do I know which retrofit kit will fit which valve? Oh, so that's a good question. So there's a number of resources that are available to you. Um, in the back of our PGPL, that's our pricing catalog, uh, we have a whole retrofit section and that has a bunch of different charts that you can go to. Uh, so long as you know your valve manufacturer size and the type of valve, uh, you should be able to look up what your standard kit will be. Uh, you can also download our retrofit app. Belimo, we have our own standard uh, retrofit app. Uh, it's a free app. It's available both in the Apple Store and in the Google Play Store. Uh, so you can look it up through the app. Um, our website is also a good resource. Um, Select Pro has its own retrofit module. Um, so between all of those, there's lots of resources available to you on how to select your retrofit kit. Okay, next question. Up to what size valve can you retrofit? Um, so there's really no uh, upper limit. The only upper limit that would exist would be um, how large of an actuator we can uh, manufacture. And so right now, the largest actuator that we have for a butterfly valve would be an SY12, um, which is uh, which can fit up to, uh, don't quote me on this, but something like 20 or 24 inch uh, butterfly valves. Um, so we don't come across too many of those, um, but really the, the uh, limit would be the amount of torque required for the application. Okay, a couple more questions have come in. What is the most common actuator used on dampers and water valves? Um, that's a good question too. Um, typically for, I, I know on the valve side, uh, ever since the release of the PR actuator, uh, that's been extremely popular with our butterfly valve uh, retrofits, um, PR, PK, it's offered also in a fail safe option. Uh, that's been a very, very popular one. I know for our globe valves, um, the UGVL, because of its universal style of uh, mechanical linkage, that's been really, really popular. Um, the installation is very easy, and so customers tend to really enjoy that. Uh, as far as on the air side of things, um, I don't necessarily have a decent guess one way or the other. Um, I know that our, our TR and our TF actuator has been around for a long time. Uh, the LF actuator, these are very popular um, actuators there as well. Okay. I heard that the GVL linkage for the current NPT globe valves is now called BGVL. Is that correct? Um, so what the BGVL is, is uh, that is a way of ordering a replacement actuator uh, for our new line of Belimo style globe valves. So back in 2000, uh, in April of 2018, uh, Belimo launched our own line of globe valves. That's in the uh, half inch up to two inch MPT threaded versions. Um, and so the linkage had to be modified slightly because uh, the bonnet style, the design of the bonnet changed. And so because you can't buy, say, the LV or the SV actuator on its own, you need a linkage for it. The linkage to do that would be the BGVL. So it's not technically, um, you know, a retrofit application. It's a replacement actuator for our own globe valve. Okay. Can you retrofit fire and smoke actuators on life safety dampers? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, yeah, Larry would be the guy to talk to for that. But yeah, fire and smoke actuators, uh, almost all of that business is uh, retrofit business. Okay. Is it possible to add a cover protection on actuator retrofits? Um, yes, we do offer um, a certain number of uh, weather shields to find the full line of weather shields that would be available for your particular type of valve, there is a chart in our PGPL uh, that shows you all the different options there. Okay. Is there an actuator suitable for high temp? Um, I guess it would depend on the application. If you're talking about a steam application, um, we may have to do uh, something custom where I know in the past, um, in the past we've done large linkages that are basically, they just act as thermal brakes. So where you would typically say, 
where you would typically have, uh, say, a four inch linkage. Uh, now we would make it, say, eight or 10 inches long. This way you're just separating the actuator away from the valve, valve body. Um, so I guess in our standard uh, retrofit um, uh, offering, we don't have something you know off the shelf for that, uh, but depending on, on the application, we can talk about it and come up with, with something, uh, a custom solution for that. Okay, we have time for two more questions. How often okay. is the Retrofit app updated? Um, the Retrofit app gets updated, I would say, uh, maybe once a year. Uh, I know that there's um, a team in Switzerland that's responsible for it. Uh, and I've gone through many workshops uh, to sort of get it up and running from the beginning to where it is it is now. Um, but if you ever find something, um, you know, if you, if you ever have any feedback on the app, um, yeah, let me know and I'll definitely convey that to the Retrofit app team uh, and see if we can get your feedback implemented. Okay, one more question for today. Are JCI ball valves compatible with the UBLK? Um, no, not at the moment. Um, that would have to be a custom solution uh, for right now. Um, but what we typically do is if we come across something that we find that we're constantly making a custom solution for the same valve over and over, uh, then that's cause for uh, going to the drawing board with engineering and seeing if we can come up with a standard uh, kit for that. For right now, we don't have that, so that would have to go through uh, one of our custom solutions. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. There's a couple more questions that look a little bit more detailed, so I'll let you answer them via email. And once again, I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, and I'd also like to thank our presenter, Steve Lopes. Remember, if you'd like a copy of the webinar or have any questions, please email training at us.belimo.com. And please, again, join us for our next webinar, which will be on February 17th. Howard Smith will give an airflow measurement and control range overview and talk about methods to improve indoor air quality, which is a huge topic right now. Thank you again, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.